Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to feel better, sleep better, or digest your food with grace and ease, then do we have the Divine Attunement show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Richard Gold, one of the founders of the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine and the president and executive producer of Meta Music, and Yuval Ron, an Oscar-winning composer, Grammy-nominated musician, and author of Divine Attunement, Music as a Path to Wisdom. And that's just what we'll be talking about today, how music and frequency change the way you think, act, feel, and even rest and digest. That plus we'll talk about Bugs Bunny, Whirling Dervishes, A Mistake by Moses, Taking Keyboards into MRIs, and Why the Bible's Been into Music for at Least 3,000 Years. So welcome to the show, Rick and Yuval. Are you both ready to shine? Yes, oh, yeah. sir. Yes, we are. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. So before we dive right into things, Yuval, I've got to go there again. I know I've had you on the show before, but what does Bugs Bunny have to do with anything? <laughs> Bugs Bunny is, is the reason that I came to Los Angeles to write music for cartoons. When I was a kid, I loved the Disney cartoons. I admired the Bugs Bunny cartoons. One of my dreams was to write music for those cartoons. It was my childhood dream, and I ended up coming to Los Angeles. I got a job in the 90s, the mid-90s at, uh, at Fox Kids, mm -hmm. and I did the music for their Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> and, and Richard, how did you get into then, how did you get into Chinese medicine and then make your way to music from there? Good question. I actually got into Chinese medicine as a result of a dream. Um, I had a dream back in the 1976 time frame mm -hmm. um, where I woke from and all I wanted to do was study acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Uh, there were no schools in the country. I didn't know any acupuncturists. It was just an intervention, a divine intervention, let's say. Um, and I, it was such a deep, profound feeling that it stuck with me. And when the first school in the country opened in Boston, I went there. And uh, the rest is 38, almost 40 years later now. And uh, I, love the, I love the field. I love the profession. I'm astounded with the growth. Awesome, awesome. So from there, let's, we'll go back to Yuval briefly. Yuval, in college, you studied something called psychoacoustic effects. What was that? Because that kind of sounds like that, that was a seed for you. Yes. Um, I'm actually using that knowledge that I learned in order to write music for films. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm using it now to compose music for healing. Because what I learned back in school, when, the, when we learned the psychoacoustics, uh, the science of psychoacoustic, is what impact of each sound and combination of sounds occur in, in the psyche of the audience. And that's how we manipulate audiences in the movie theaters. Every time you go to the movie theater, the music makes you feel and think what the director and the producers want you to feel and think. So even if there's a scary element on screen, but the director wants you to know that it's not that terrible, the music would hint you, and there's a certain art to it. We learned the tools, how to do that. And so uh, that's something that stuck with me. And when I work with healers like Dr. Gold, I often bring that knowledge of what kind of frequencies, what kind of sounds create a certain emotional and psychological effects in the listeners. And I use that in the field of sound healing, which Dr. Gould and I are deeply into now, nowadays. Thank you. And I, I want to talk about how you both got into this together. I'm thinking back to uh, acupuncture sessions that I've had in the past, and they always have like a music box going in the corner with some sort of soothing music going on. Uh, Rick, it, did this have any influence on you? How did you start to, to come up with a concept yourself of using music as a healing modality? Very good question. Um, what I had found, because I've always played music, and for many years I practiced with an acupuncture pediatrician, so mm -hmm. we, had, we used sound both to mute sound in adjoining rooms and also to help to create the environment for healing. But after many years of listening to uh, ambient, especially computer-generated ambient sounds, it stopped being uh, meditative or calming for me. It became an irritant. Now, for a patient who's there for 45 minutes or an hour, it's usually not going to be a big difference. But in my 20th patient, after eight hours, that same sound be, can become an irritant. 
And so my desire to have highly uh, listenable to music, something, someone who is musical or uh, appreciates musicality, combined with the healing elements seemed to me like a winning combination. Um, before I met Yuval, I had used sound to help facilitate meditation, what's known mm -hmm. as binaural sounds, and I began to really see uh, the potential for sound for deepening um, emotional, physical, and spiritual experiences. So to, we don't use binaural sounds, but the idea to use sound, um, but in a highly musical manner, especially played by acoustic musicians, was very appealing to me. And then when I, you met Yuval, um, almost f a little bit over five years ago, it was a voila experience, and uh, and we had this melding of minds and, and just uh, and hearts. We understood exactly what we wanted to achieve. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Yuval talks about in, in his book, Divine Attunement, of how you can really tune an audience and how a performance is much more than a performance. And, and I'm wondering, how do you tune people. I'm thinking yesterday I was in Trader Joe's. Everybody's walking around like it, it's just before the holidays. Are, ah, you know, going to get into these giant lines. And they've got this music going. And I don't know why I think I was the only one by the registers and Jessica was somewhere in the back. We're going, we're grooving to the tunes and we're dancing in line. We synced up. What was yes. going on and how do you do that? Well, we have the tendency as humans, and actually it was found at animals too, have this tendency to sync heartbeat rhythm, mm -hmm. breathing rhythm, and motion to the pulse that is provided to us by music or the environment. So it's a great tool. We are just naturally want to be in harmony with pulsation that surrounds us. So if you want to clean your house and you have no energy whatsoever, and you put in some good rhythmic dance music and suddenly you have energy and you you're moving you're grooving and you're cleaning the house so sound has incredible impact on us uh, one of the things that we do we in our products dr gould and i use something called isochronic mm -hmm. beats isochronic tones which attune the brain waves of the listener so just like you said when you go to a dance party or you go to Trader Joe's and there's a certain pulse in the music that makes you move along with that, our brain also vibrate. And that's, you know, we know about the alpha and beta and delta and gamma and those frequencies of the brain when the brain is in different modes of uh, existence, of awareness. If you, if you sleep versus if you meditate versus when you think intellectually, your brain vibrate in different rhythms. Mm -hmm. And so what we do in our music is we embedded a pulse, which is subliminal pulse, which slowly slows down and encourages the brain to also slows down so you can enter a meditative state that provides healing and rest. Yeah, there's actually a, a term that's used now called brain entrainment. Yeah. And that's what we're seeking to do. We're seeking to create a pulse that will help entrain the brain into these very scientifically determined categories or, or criteria of what are these different levels of meditative states. And uh, another recent thing, especially uh, subsequent to Yuval's training in the 90s, is now with functional MRIs, we can see the brain in real time. He didn't have that when he was a student, but we have that now. So we can, we're not using functional MRIs, it's quite, but we know that from scientific uh, literature, that you can actually observe the brain and brain centers with different influences and different stimuli. And so that, that's what we're trying to achieve to I, get to those states. I was fascinated in Yuval's book. He talks about how they put musicians into the MRI <laughs> with a 12-bar keyboard. And, and I've had, yeah. unfortunately, my share of MRIs. I know what that <laughs> space is like. But, but it was amazing how the brain lit up not just with music, but particularly with improvisation, with creativity, with, with inspiration. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's different than what's going on in the brain when you play a set given uh, musical piece that somebody else composed. Mm -hmm. Different activities, different areas in the brain lit up. <laughs> and a corollary yep. to something you said, Michael, too, is once you become sensitive to this realm, 
so often you're in a restaurant or in an environment and the music is all wrong. I was going to skirt this question and it was, it was on my mind because going into the gym first thing in the morning, since I've become sensitive to this, my musical habits, my musical What's the term for eating? The music you want to eat has sure, yeah. completely sure, digest, changed. Absorb. Digest, yes, has completely changed. And I struggle in the gym because I like to be fully in my environment. I don't want to put the headphones on. And yet there's this steely beat techno. Sometimes the music literally makes you want to rawr and just like attack a machine or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, in my book, I mentioned some studies of the negative impact of heavy metal and techno on uh, increased levels of aggression, violence. Uh, there's some, some studies about actually to trying to tie uh, hate crime behavior to the kind of music that the people who uh, committed those crimes exposed themselves in the prior hours of that actual crime. It's very interesting. Definitely, sound is a tool. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can use it for good and you can use it for harm. So you, you have to know what you're doing. Um, and I guess you have to be careful what you sync up with. I found even words have a resonant or a frequency. Mm -hmm. Like yes. I, our show is a very family-friendly show. I tend to bleep everything out. But the words often that we bleep out, they actually have a hostility to them sure 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 the, the, and those all all our vibrations it's all sound language is sound as well so you were saying when we go into a restaurant and we hear music that we're we're uh, not syncing with we are syncing with but we don't want to sync with what do you do well, it's, it's a challenge. Um, I think what you do is you start to shut down parts of your consciousness in order to either uh, enjoy your meal or to communicate with the people that you're sitting with. Um, you know, I often go to meals with people because I want to share, share not just food but conversation. And I've more than once in recent years asked restaurants to turn music down um, or to, ch to change it. Um, because what they're doing, it, it's, it's spoiling my appetite, it's lowering my tip. Um, sure. And it's not it's not conducive to the kind of communication I want to have with whoever I'm sitting with. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Yuval. Yeah, I find the same trend, and I, I I'm in the same boat on that. And uh, I, that's that's a field that I wish we could impact. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've been doing some educational workshops for yoga yoga teachers in yoga studios in Los Angeles. I've, I've given presentations talking to teachers and yoga studio owner, owners on the impact of sound and music so they could choose music wisely for the classes. I mean, I, I wish we could do some classes, you know, in, uh, you know, cuisine schools, you know, where, where restaurant owners or chefs go to schools and, and give them a, a workshop about sound in a restaurant, you know? That would be so interesting. What's cool to me about that, because I know I take my meals, I'm the weird guy, and I take my meals whenever I can, and I go out to my lawn, and I'll sit down even in the cold of winter, sure. because <laughs> that, that ambient environment, the natural sounds, as long as I don't have a bunch of cars going by, changes, literally changes the taste of my food. Yeah. It's amazing. And now the more we understand how sound uh, can be part of a healing uh, event or mm -hmm. a healing process, when you go into a doctor's office, what is the sound, what music is being played? When you're in ICU or in a hallway of a hospital, what's the music being played? We have to be purposeful. We have to be conscious of what's being played. And uh, it's not happening. And that's part of the, hopefully, the revolution that we're part of uh, together. I, I love it. Last week, there are a lot of synchronicities that happen on the show, and I love it when I can see one thing from one one book being mentioned in the next book and so forth, the, the string uh, tapestry of the universe. We had on Dr. Bernie Siegel a few days ago, and he was asking me, and he said, Michael, off the top of your head, uh, top of your head uh, if you had to be blind or deaf, which would you choose? And I said, blind. And I said, and I don't know why. And afterwards, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm a runner. I'm a cyclist. I like to drive. I'd lose all those things. Why did I choose to keep my hearing? And he said, wise choice, because of the frequency and resonance involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, sound is amazing. Sound is in, invoking sight. You know, you can you can close your eyes and hear mm-hmm. certain sounds, certain music, and you could see a picture. Good point. Beautiful, beautiful. So I think what we'll do at this point is I'm going to try to play, this is a first for the show, I'm going to try to play a piece of music right here, and then I want to talk about what it, anything to do with it, any of the technical nuances, but I guess heart overhead, more more what is, ah, let's play it and we'll talk. <laughs> let's see here. This is um, a piece for relieving stress. Can you both hear that, or is it only playing on my end? Okay, so I'm going to play for one minute, and you're going to imagine that it's playing with the harp, and... ah. can you tell us about what we were listening to? And uh, I know you weren't hearing it just now on your end. We're familiar. Yes. So what were we listening to? And even my voice has changed now. I think I went from a squirrel on crack before. <laughs> to, ah. This is a wonderful, wonderful evidence on the impact of sound. Because the sound, you just expose yourself to 60 seconds of sound that relaxes you, that slows down the, uh, your heart rate, uh, the frequencies of your brain. And, it, and we see that maybe in, 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 in the way your face is, but definitely the way the sound of your voice, and even my sound of my voice is being affected by your sound of your voice. And that's a great, great testimony to the power of this track, which is all about relieving stress. And Dr. Gold gave me the formula. He, he indicated to me which elements mm-hmm. from Chinese, Chinese medicines I ought to invoke. Um, Rick, uh, I, think it, I, think it was, I think it was water and, yes, and other definitely. things. That's yeah. what I was catching is, is, is water, that soothing, calming, and, and, and I'm a wood. I'm told I'm a hard wood. So yeah. water can be very soothing for me. But what we did is we used the, the, the matrix of Chinese medicine, which is, a, which is a interwoven web of, of relationships between the human being and the organs of the human being and, and the environment that, that we live in. And so each of the emotions also is part of an elemental quality, too. And so with stress, we, we know in, in, even in Western physiology, we know that stress is most harmful to the adrenals and the kidneys secondarily to the heart and, and other aspects too. Mm-hmm. So what we did is we, you, we, have, we had ideas about composition and also tones that we use uh, according to the elements. And so we paired up the uh, physiology to the pathology and then came under it with the, with the seasonal vibrations and the sounds and, and even the instruments that Chinese harp, the zither you hear, is designated as the instrument for water over 2,000 years ago in Chinese medical literature. So can, can we geek out on that just a little bit more? How do you evoke, so that, in, that instrument, that makes sense. How else are you evoking the different elements here? Well, we had also wood, right? There's water, wood, mm-hmm. and I believe calm fire. Calm fire. A very, very gentle element of fire. So there's the wood that is being uh, expressed through the classical guitar. Okay. And what we say about the wood element in Chinese medicine is it smooths 
the flow of blood and chi or blood and energy. It's, it smooths it and helps it flow more fluidly throughout the whole body and mind. And then there's the third element of Stress calm. is like this in real time. Uh -huh. And then there's calm fire. What, what does the calm fire? Uh, well, we, we know that when uh, there's stress, usually the heart rate's going to increase and we, we run risk of, of damage to the heart. So we want to calm the fire, calm mm -hmm. the heart. And then we're strengthening and tonifying the kidney because that's where cortisol is going to be uh, reabsorbed and uh, and actually the production of it's going to be reduced. Mm -hmm. So what I did with the instruments is I chose certain musical modes that express the quality of water, certain musical tones, a certain central mode. Uh, the same thing with the wood. Uh, there's a certain musical intervals that, for example, in the harp. Mm -hmm. something we call arpeggios. Arpeggios come from the word arp, alpa in Latin. It's the quality of the harp to play uh, notes one after another, and it sounds like, you know, do, 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 do. And it's a little bit like a bubbling brook. Or it has a wavy quality, and so we, we use that in the harp. Um, and, and each of the elements, uh, the the calm fire is expressed through a woodwind, I believe. We, mm -hmm. use, we use a bamboo flute because fire needs oxygen. The, the, the woodwind is leading to fire, and by the controlling of the breath of the flutist, you control the amount of fire. You could blow really hard, and you can be very passionate and wild with the flute, or you could control your breath and release it in a in a calm way and that affects your heart I've, as a listener i've been through native american ceremonies before and um, either flute drums or guitar are used to accelerate and evoke mm -hmm. or slow and calm mm -hmm. yes yes exactly yeah the music can be the conductor the music can tell the audience how to feel, and that goes back to the psychoacoustic quality of sound. Another layer of this uh, with Chinese medicine mm -hmm. uh, is, is emotion and attributes of the energies related to the elements. And so when we strengthen the kidneys, we're actually giving more courage, which is how do we, how do we deal with stress is one way to, to feel more courageous. When we work with wood, we're enhancing benevolence and, and kindness. And with the heart, it's loving, loving kindness, it's metta. And so there's multiple layers that we've woven together uh, from various scientific, uh, old science, modern science, uh, music, yeah. psychoacoustic, that um, I think create a very rich tapestry of, of sound. So now on this, we're, we're talking uh, about six pieces more or less today that seem to all help you get into the, uh, uh, this will put it in simplistic terms, the parasympathetic nervous system, rest, digest, relax, get out of being chased by the tiger mode. Can any of this be used to help you stay in a calm, focused place? Um, I think Restore Hope does that, mm -hmm. th th that track, Restore Hope. The other one, which is a little bit different, Michael, is the one we use for relieve belly ache, we call it. We didn't want to put the word constipation on a cover of a... Uh, but that, if that you listen to that... That has the didgeridoo, that, right? Uh, yeah, and 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 that one, um, it, it, it's more of a moving energy because that's <laughs> that's what we want to do. But we, but we want to move deep. We don't want to increase heart rate. We want to increase. It's still calming, but there is a quality of that which is not quite as restful mm -hmm. because it's actually uh, trying to invoke movement and action. That makes sense. I want to go to a, a story that's in Yuval's book, because I found that fascinating. I alluded to it or joked about it at the beginning, which is in the Bible, there's a story over 3,000 years ago of how music could help with depression for a very depressed king. I wonder, Yuval, if, if yes. you could share, or either of you, share a little bit about sure. this. Sure, I love this, this testimony in the scriptures about the first king of the nation of Israel. The very first king, the, the Israelites were a nation of prophets and, and, and spiritual leaders. They never had kings. They didn't know how to deal with kings. They, they always had like a Dalai, Dalai, Dalai Lama, like the Tibetans have a Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. The Israelites have Moses, they had spiritual people. And finally, 
they got their first king. They didn't know how to deal with the king. The king didn't know how to deal with them. And the king was depressed all the time. Nothing worked. No medicine, no remedies. All the doctors gave up. And then they found a musician, a great, great young musician. His name was David. He was a shepherd boy. They brought him in and he cured the king with music. And, and so the, 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 he was ordered to be in the palace all the time with the king. As long as he played the music, the king was functioning, functioning well and cured from his depression. When the music was gone, you know, if David would take a break, it says, you know, the depression would come back. So, so going along those lines, I'll, I'll ask both of you, or maybe it falls more in, 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 in Rick's uh, area of expertise, what is a prescription for us, because we're all struggling with something in life today. We're, we're all slightly, I'd say, one gear off, just the way society is kind of charged or over-revved today. Mm -hmm. What's a prescription for using music to help us feel better, and more importantly, beyond the symptoms, help us to heal from the inside out? Well, I think that's re what we would call restoration, mm -hmm. and that's going to be... Um, Really to, to bring the body and mind, not just in sleep, although sleep is certainly restorative, but in a waking conscious way to bring the body and mind to a, 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 sing, a, a still point. And, um, and this, I think, physiologically is going to be stop shooting so much cortisol out into the system, mm -hmm. stop constricting the blood vessels, stop increasing heart rate, uh, stop having energy move up. You know what we call yang yang rising or heat rising, um, and to to create a, a calmness and a centeredness and a oneness where we don't feel the desperation, the disparateness and the desperation that we see happening in society. So does well, that mean so sort of like David playing for the king? And I guess we didn't get the get the king uh, Saul. King get, Saul, right? Get the uh, king, get the punchline for King Saul. What what I, I've got to ask you all? What happened to David? So David uh, was around when Goliath came, and David was not a soldier, but, he, but, but all the soldiers and the generals refused to go and face Goliath. And so the music therapist, the little shepherd boy turned music therapist, volunteered to go and face Goliath. And, and because he managed to win against Goliath, uh, shortly after, he was asked to be the second king of Israel, and he's much, he's much more famous king and more successful king. He was more successful uh, than the first king, of course. Well, one could argue for King David that he was, and this gets back to the prescription, that maybe we need to bathe ourselves, to truly immerse ourselves in music. I'm, I'm guilty about this myself. You talk about it in your book, Yuval. You talk about us having gray offices, gray computers, mm -hmm. probably even gray cubicles. And what you mean by that is it's lacking a richness, a tone, a texture to it. And, and I do a lot of work for the show where I'm diving into a book, I want to stay focused in the book, diving into the edit, and I'm not bringing enough of that richness in. And I think this is challenging me today, and I think may challenge a lot of our audience. We need to kind of immerse ourselves in this, don't we? Yes, I think, I think it's very important to have some kind of a refuge each day, a 10 minutes or 20 minutes at the, mo at the minimum. Uh, it can be a yoga class, mm -hmm. it can be a refuge, it can be a prayer meditation, you know, but imagine if every person around the world would sit for 10 minutes a day with relaxing music or with silence uh, and, and slow themselves down and reattune themselves. It would be a, one, a, a much better world, uh, in my opinion. It'd be self-reflective. Uh, one thing that modern science has shown us, which is quite interesting, um, and I want to expand on the 10 minutes, is that mm -hmm. a, a 40 minutes a day of mindfulness, mindfulness, we don't we can call it prayer or meditation, you start to see structural changes of the brain itself back to a younger, more healthy brain. And so as we, as we confront the challenges of dementia and Alzheimer and forgetfulness in general, um, if we keep in mind that the brain can be rejuvenated and one of the best tools, it's not a pharmaceutical tool, it's a consciousness tool, it's a quieting tool, it's a meditative tool. And for many of us, meditation is not easy. I mean, one of my driving forces of using sound was to facilitate uh, shutting myself off. You know, this little 
squirrels always busy talking all the time. <laughs> but sound can take the acorn away from the squirrel, and the squirrel will have to sit for a little while and uh, be self-reflective. I, I like it. And uh, when you all towards the end of your book, you talk about a concert you gave in 2008, Berna, Berna, Roya <laughs> Hall yeah, in ben, Seattle. Yes, Berna Roya Hall. And there was a Jesuit priest, a president of Seattle University, spoke to you afterwards about how music can be prayer. Yes, yes. He, he said that he felt that during the concert, uh, he did his prayer for the week. I mean, the music, the, the, the concert did it for him because it provided a place for meditation and contemplation and going to a deep, a deep a spiritual experience. So he, you know, a Jesuit priest, the president of the university, felt that he doesn't need to go the next morning to pray because he did his prayers. He, he had the experience. That was incredible testimony. So, well, one, important point, excuse me, about, one important point about my work with Yuval, which I think um, is, is quite, uh, quite valid and, and, and important to even mention, is that the main themes of our music is played by acoustic musicians. And not, it's not just computer generated. Now, a computer can generate sound that sounds like an acoustic musician, but the vibration of it is not the same. And the vibration of sound is what really affects our our auric system, our energy system, our nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system. So I think utilizing acoustic musicians to play our main themes really deepens the effect of our of our music. That gets to a huge point. Thank you for bringing that up, Rick. Is in, in Yuval's book, he's talking about inspiration at one point, and what the difference is. I mean, we go back to the MRI. The difference between playing a pre-recorded piece versus playing something improvisational, or also the importance, as is done here, of some really top musicians diving into the work at such a level that they become, is it too much to say, become the music, and that inspiration we're syncing up with. Yes, yeah, that is, yes. that's intentionality, too, becomes part of it. Yes, so if you look at the spectrum of vibration that you get from sitting with a real harp mm -hmm. versus a, a computer sample, digital sample of a harp, you see that the amount of vibrations, the amount of information that vibrates you is much larger with a real instrument. So what we do when we use computer digital instruments exclusively, we are, we are making it, uh, it's like a very low res grainy photo. Mm -hmm. There's much less information there. So what we want is to have the full experience because that is what music has been doing for us. It's a full experience, vibrational experience that we are providing with those real musicians. So a, a term I, I've never used or heard before, but I'm sure it's out there, is what do we do, either of you, for good sound hygiene? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, well I... You know, first of all, um, you, have, you, be, you have to become aware of the music that you're exposing yourself because it's just like food. The food that you eat, you want it to come from good sources. It will be wholesome food. Uh, when you look at music, you want to be able to listen to as much as a broad, wide spectrum, which that uh, is not streaming sounds mm -hmm. on the internet through small, tiny little speakers. So... It would be better for people to get full spectrum tracks, which you can get on the internet. There's some services that give you that, or higher level of MP3s. You know, MP3s can be a standard MP3 is 128. A, a, a larger MP3 file can be 300 over 300, 320. That would be healthier and more satisfying for our nervous system, for our body and soul. Does that mean more of a surround sound system or speakers that have a greater, we're going to really geek out here, but dynamic right. range to them? Dynamic range, yes. Definitely speakers that are not the tiny, tiny, tiny speakers. Headphones are good. Mm -hmm. Good headphones are good. But there's some pressure, physical pressure on your head that is, after a while, tiring. It's, it's creating fatigue. So... Uh, the ideal is to have nice speakers 
in your room and to to be able to hear the real the real deal so for example when people go to our website they have choices they can download the music as an mp3 they can download the music as what's called flac f l a c which is like a cd quality mm -hmm. and some of most of our music is also available on cd's stills so people can listen to it on a cd player at their home uh you can listen to it in your car you can listen to it uh anywhere Uh, but I, I would encourage people to, to get the maximum amount of experience. So, and, and it's a good segue here. And then, Rick, I've, I've got a good question for you here in a second. Where can people go to find your music and to find out more? Well, the, the best place is our own website, which is www.metamindfulnessmusic.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have we are working closely with the company CD Baby, which supports independent artists out of Portland, and uh, they have a wide variety of music. But our music is available to be downloaded there, um, iTunes, um, Amazon. I mean, we we we're plugged into the modern the modern ways of getting music. Um, so all these our music's available in all these places. We also have our own YouTube uh, channel. People can subscribe to. We have some short videos, which I think are enhancements to meditative consciousness that are available there. Um, so I think those are the main ways. But CD Baby, if you type in Yuval Ron, um, is where things open up and you get to see not only our work together, but his work in film and, and yes. his own ensemble work also. Fantastic. Michael, yes, Michael, go for if, it. If, if I may, I, I, I'd like our listeners to know that the new six albums that we released are the first one and the only one so far these are the three they all sound remedies relieve stress relieve uh indigestion relieve mm -hmm. different things those six first albums are the first ones that we have accompanied by a one minute meditation instruction by dr gold so you have one minute of you listening to instructions and And that's a separate track. So once you listen to it, you don't have to listen to it again. You can just go into the 10 minutes meditation sound remedy track. And whenever you want to remind yourself how to breathe and what to think, you can, again, listen to the instruction. Uh, and we have those instructions on our website as well. But people can get it. Uh, as an audio track and listen to it. Fantastic. And what we'll do at the very end, which is only about three or four minutes from now, is is we'll have Rick take us through one minute and then we'll end with one of those 10-minute music segments for people. Okay. Before that, uh, either Rick or Yuval, what would you tell parents about helping their kids to be more aware? You can't tell kids what to listen to, but helping to crank up their awareness of how music and sound affects emotion. Mm. Yes, you know, when you, it's, it's a synchronistic moment here because when you were talking earlier about sound therapy, and it reminded me of, of and it's, it's informed by my clinical practice in medicine, when a couple are pregnant, Mm -hmm. is when you find out really where their values around health are. And when a, especially uh, for the, the woman who's carrying the baby, she should be very careful about the influences, especially of food and, and nutrition, but also of sound. She's going to play Mozart into that baby, she, she, into her womb or in the environment. She's not going to uh, play staccato uh, <laughs> EMT music. You know, she's not. And so with that, with that in mind, what, and what I tried to do with my kids is they could listen to what they wanted. Um, but we really tried to also, especially during quiet times or in the car, also include sound that was therapeutic. It's, it's a mixture. It's like you don't always want to eat um, just miso soup. Sometimes you want to have maybe a spicy tom yum or something like that. But you wanted to try to, to have more health. You want, to, you want to keep that balance. Yeah. You know, it leads me to think about my children and children of my friends who have been using our music, uh, a CD called Water and a mm -hmm. CD called Wood from the acupuncture uh, ancient wisdom box. And the kids for years, for the last four years, children are all over the country and all over the world are sleeping and being aided to have a good sleep with that music. And the kids love it. And they know, oh, they want to put the music on. They, they, oh, we're going to sleep. Let's go and put water. Let's go and put wood. Uh, so when it's, when it's used in the right place, the right time, 
kids are very receptive to it. Another place where they're using it is in preschools. In Los Angeles, they've been using it in Montessori preschools, that same music, and they found out that the level of aggression th through the whole day went down. The kids are cooperating better. They're more harmonious. It's amazing. These are three to four years old. And they just, basically, the teachers just put the music in the background quietly throughout the whole day. Beautiful. It's making me think mm. peace, something peace. that you're, you're both yes. very into. Yes, yes, so indeed. Before we wrap things up, I know we have to keep this on the short side today. Any last words of wisdom? Well, I'll go first to Rick, then you to Yuval, and then, then we'll jump into a brief meditation and let you guys get going. I think the thing that I want to mention in closing is to consider uh, the purpose, purposeful, purposefulness of the sounds that you listen to and the music that you listen to. Meditation, I mean, if, you're, if you're busy getting a dinner ready for a group of people, you want to have maybe Bob Marley, you know, or something that's a little more upbeat. But it's very important to uh, be cognizant of the environment of sound that we're in and the, uh, the beneficial effects that are possible of sound that's composed and performed with the intention of enhancing loving kindness, understanding, peace of mind, and better health. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And uh, Yuval? Michael, I'd like to encourage listeners to use more healing music in their lives, to combine that with meditation, combine mm -hmm. this with yoga, combine this with Tai Chi, combine it with body work, and with intentional thinking of what they want to heal, you know, if they want to heal a problem in their tummy, if they could use the meditation and, and intentional thinking and music, they may be able to reduce dependency on drugs and, and going other routes. So I would encourage them to try it. Try those sound remedies and see how it works for you. Beautiful. Last real quick question before we do the meditation. Uh, Outside of my studio here, they're always using lawnmower equipment and what I call implements of, well, pretty much mass destruction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is a sound remedy? Is there such a thing? Well, what I what I do when they're doing it in my neighborhood is I put on my my other my Bose sound reduction earphones yep. and pl and play music. You're very, it's very important. I think those those are um, it's like breathing in toxins. It's like listening to yes. toxic sounds. And there's a pitch of those sounds that we're not really aware of, which yes. uh, your physiology is aware of, and you're you're yes. re reacting to it. So Michael, my my, gar my gardener has a company called the Quiet Gardener, and they oh. use only electrical tools, and it's like a vacuum clean. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner rather than those Whish. terrible blowers. And I encourage, you know, I made a flyer. I went to all my neighbors. I encourage everybody that I know, the school in my neighborhood, I encourage them to go that route. You know, it's a long, long, long battle, but I, I encourage people to look into those solutions. There's, you know, one of my neighbors got converted, my next door neighbor, but he himself bought it for himself. He loves the idea of those quiet tools. So, you know, I hope it's going to spread. Look for look for quiet garden tools. I, I like it, and I've had a, a when I was mowing my own lawn, I went to electric trimmer, electric mower for that very reason, and found it. Or actually, uh, depending on where I lived, even a push mower found yeah, it much I, much I more peaceful. One. Yes. So, well, thank you both for so much for being on the show. We'll do just a uh, just a tiny bit with with Rick Yuval. I know you need to get going. I know yeah. you both do, but thank you so much. So I'm going to do a quick wrap up, and then Rick, just one minute with you here. Thank you so much for being on the show, everybody. Check out Divine Attunement. Head over to their website. Use the music. There's a piece we didn't even get to today on helping you not only to digest. There's one on helping you to sleep and sleep like a baby. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get divine attunement, and get in sync, and shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you very much, Michael. Thank, Thank you, you for Michael. having me. I love doing those interviews with you. I love your spirit. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources 
really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! Ha, ha, ha.